بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا. So as promised, I'm going to deal with this issue, inshallah, marrying a student of knowledge. Okay, marrying a student of knowledge. Okay, so um, in terms of this, I'm going to tell you where I come from. Okay, so you know the angle that I'm approaching this issue from. Let me turn my brightness up one sec. Because when a person speaks, it's important that you know the perspective that they're coming from and what's their experience in this um, field, okay? So, the first thing is that I want you to know that I have travelled with students of knowledge and we've sat down and we sit and we speak and, and these types of things, okay? And some might say, you're a student of knowledge, I don't consider myself a student of knowledge, I'm just a normal brother, students of knowledge, mashallah. Uh, you know, they are people who spend their time uh, in, 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 in knowledge and, and these types of things. I'm just your local guy with a little bit of experience and a fast mouth. But the point is, what I want to say is, I don't think, or I don't want you to think as sisters, that marrying a student of knowledge is all that it's cracked up to be. It's like the ultimate goal and the ultimate aim is to marry a student of knowledge, okay? Because you want somebody practicing, you want somebody who's knowledgeable, you want somebody who, mashallah, has a beard, you want somebody who uh, loves Allah, loves the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you want somebody who can teach you, you want somebody who... Uh, is grounded in Islam and he's going to really increase your iman he's going to bring you closer to Allah you want you want you want you want you want and all of these things seem to be encapsulated in the student of knowledge all of these things that you want seem to be there in the student of knowledge and so it's like wow this is marrying this guy or somebody like him is going to be everything that I ever needed okay and I'm sorry to burst your bubble and I'm sorry to um, I'm sorry to uh, disappoint you but that's not the case okay the reality of social media is that you're falling in love with a persona that a person is putting on or putting up online I believe, or in my opinion, there are very few people who are just straight, genuine, take me or leave me, love me or hate me, I don't care kind of people. You have to see that social media, we are putting up a version of ourselves that we want the people to see. And so essentially all we're doing is constantly reinforcing this version for the whole world to see. Constantly reassessing this, uh, re, uh, re uh, I can't remember the words, it's gone. Reinforcing this version. And so you as a sister, you're watching this guy now and you're thinking, wow, mashallah, He's made these videos and he's made these reminders and he's talking and all you can hear from him is Subhanallah, MashaAllah, InshaAllah, Tabarakallah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and, and these things are getting you going, right? And, you're, and, and then you go and, you, and you, you know, you're stalking his, uh, his profile and you're scrolling down and you're watching everything and you're watching everything that he does and you're looking at his videos and then you're looking at the way that he speaks and the way that he moves his lips and then you're going on to his um his uh YouTube channel and you're looking at his his posts there and you think and and don't you see that you're you're becoming infatuated and you're becoming besotted with this version that he wants you to see you're becoming besotted with this version that isn't actually a true representation of the man behind the message you're becoming infatuated with the message that's coming out and the uh, him while he's delivering that message but you're not you don't know the guy behind the message 
You don't know the guy behind the screen. You don't know the guy behind the persona or you don't know the guy behind the, the mask. And that's what I want to say, okay, is that marrying a student of knowledge is not what it is cracked up to be. If the brother is a strong student of knowledge and then, mashallah, there are some very strong brothers or there are some strong brothers, okay, you have to see that a large portion of his time, by definition, is going to go into seeking knowledge. And so that's one thing that he's going to be involved in. The next thing is that he's going to be involved in giving da'wah. That's the next thing that he's going to be involved in. The next thing is that he needs to work. Okay, so he's going to be working. So this uh, this thing of that some of our sisters have is that, mashallah, I want to marry a student of knowledge. He's going to teach me. He's going to uh, you know bring me closer to Allah. I promise you when he comes home at the end of the day, he's going to want to relax. He's going to want some food. He's going to want some space. At the end of the night or whatever, whenever it is, he's going to want sex. And, and you might, that's fine with you. And that's fine with him. That's, that's your relationship. But the thing is, he's not going to spend all of his time teaching you and pulling you up. And this is why I always say to brothers and sisters, be independent in your iman. Be independent in your Islam. You don't need to marry somebody for them for you to start seeking knowledge. You don't need to marry somebody for you to start coming closer to Allah. Because then were you, were you ever genuine in the first place? Or are you doing it because that person wants you to do it? And so that's the thing that I want to say first and foremost is be independent. Be independent and do it before marriage for the sake of Allah. Get yourself to a level that you always wanted to be, not because you're married to, or you think you're going to get married to some da'iyah. Get Do it because you want to do it for Allah. This is the first thing. The other thing which I mentioned is, brothers and sisters, we don't know who the man is behind the, 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 the character. We don't know the character. Like I said, sisters are becoming infatuated with some brothers. They fall in love with them and they, they, they think about them all of the time. And it's like, he doesn't even know that you exist. But you're in love with the character. You're in love with the, you're in, you're in love with the man in the, in the cloak, right? Or the man in the thobe in this situation. And so you don't know who, him for his reality. You know, uh, some of these students of knowledge or people who, I, I've told you this before, I sat in front of them and I said, you're a joke, mate. You're a joke. You don't have manly characteristics. You don't have any manliness about you. And, and, and I promise you, I've sat in front of some of these guys and I've told them, what's wrong with you? Where's your knowledge? Like, what's your knowledge translating into? You're still a boy. Your knowledge hasn't turned you into a man. And so these types of characteristics don't think that because he's a student of knowledge, he's going to be well-mannered and he's going to fear Allah a lot and he's going to treat you really well and, 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 and don't take these things for granted because students of knowledge are men and they are weak just like the rest of us. They have weaknesses just like the rest of us. They get tired and they get angry, they get upset, they get weak in their iman just like the rest of us. A student of knowledge struggling with his prayer? Really? Yeah, really. A student of knowledge struggling to wake up for Fajr in the morning? Really? Yes, really. A student of knowledge uh, afflicted with watching pornography? Really? Yes. A student of knowledge committing haram? Yes. A student of knowledge dealing in riba and all? Yes. And so don't, don't think, ikhwani uh, fillah, that because a person has this many followers or he's got this many good speeches or this or this or this that suddenly he is an amazing person that's not the case but just because a person is not an amazing person doesn't mean he can't give da'wah to Allah that's an important thing that we have to say that if a person is falling into a sin does that mean he doesn't need to uh, he's not allowed to speak against that sin the answer is no he, whilst he's dealing with that sin, he can still be warning against the sin as well. He recognizes that it's haram and he's doing his best. He's falling into it. Let me give you an example. A man, he listens to music. A man, he, uh, he, his heart is connected to music. Does that mean now that he's not allowed to go and say to the people music is haram? No, of course he can he can go and teach them because he's he's just conveying what the religion is. He's conveying the message.
but he falls short and he listens to music. Does that mean now he's going to take down his uh, his thing and his social media and he's not going to give da'wah anymore? No. So what I'm trying to say, my uh, dear beloved sisters, is do not fall in love with the persona. Do not think that because he is a student of knowledge or he is or for what you see he has knowledge, don't ever think that that means he's going to teach you and, and you're going to become a shaykha. Don't think that. If you want to attain that level, attain it for Allah, do it yourself. He wants a wife. He doesn't want a student. That's important. He wants a wife. He doesn't want a student. I'll say it again. He wants a wife. He does not want a student. Okay? That's extremely important. The next thing. Is that we find that some of our brothers, because they've gone abroad and they've they've studied, mashallah, and then they come back, they don't necessarily have the best jobs. Okay, they don't necessarily have the best jobs, and so as a result of that, they're struggling financially. Don't assume that dawah pays really well. Mashallah, some people are raking it in, doing their courses and doing what they're doing, and they're selling tickets and all of that malaki, and they're making good money. Alhamdulillah. But that's not everyone, right? You can probably you can probably count those people who are making good money on one hand or less than that. On a few fingers, you can count those people. The rest of the brothers, they might be struggling. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, whilst there are advantages to marrying somebody who is a student of knowledge, don't make it your be all and end all. And don't think that there are that there, the brothers, unless he's a student of knowledge, then then, uh, you know, I don't want to marry him. There are some amazing brothers with better character, with more knowledge than some of these students of knowledge, with, with, who are more practicing and they're firmer in terms of their ibadah and, and actually acting on their knowledge. They're better than the students of knowledge. They're better than many of the students of knowledge. And this is what some of the mashaykh say, that you get some of the people who are, they're just from the awam, the general masses, and they're better than the students of knowledge. They're closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'd make a better husband or a better wife. They'd make a better spouse, a better father. And, and you know, that's one thing that, like I said, I have seen it with my own eyes and I've, and I've experienced it. That just because a person has a degree or he's knowledgeable or he, he is memorized or he's this or he's that, doesn't mean he's got good character. Doesn't mean he's going to treat you well. Doesn't mean that he is a person who is trustworthy or reliable or upright. And it doesn't mean that they don't play politics. One of the things that I hate the most is politics. People who are scheming and plotting and planning one thing to your face, another thing behind your back. And, you know, that whole politics game. And, and, it, and, and the jealousy and the politics between the students of knowledge is worse than the British Council, worse than the British Parliament, mate, and it's disgusting. And so one thing that I say to you, sisters, is listen, aim to marry a brother who is going to treat you well, who's going to be a good father, and you're going to and you're going to raise your children upon Islam. That's what you need. OK, what a woman needs and likewise, uh, you know, uh, what, what she needs as a minimum she needs to understand the halal and the haram. She needs to understand the morals and the etiquettes and the conduct of a Muslim, of a mother, of a of, of how her children should be, how a wife should be. She doesn't need to excel and know the detailed things because ultimately she's the first university. She's going to teach the first school, the first college. She's going to teach those children. So learn the basics, but do it before marriage. Cover yourself, do it before marriage. Learn Islam, do it before marriage. Come closer to Allah, do it before marriage. Why do you want to marry somebody with a, with a, with a degree before that happens? Then are you doing it for Allah or are you doing it for that person? Take that step and come closer to Allah before marriage. Do it for Allah. Don't do it for your spouse. Because if you do it for your spouse, my friend, my sister, then it's not going to last. Because when he's happy with you, you're going to do it. And when you're not happy with him, when you're upset with him, you're going you're gonna, to uh, shed all of that character. And, and just like he has a persona, you're going to then have a persona. So do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's uh, what I wanted to say in that regard. 
okay, in that regard. And, and actually, I'm going to open it up to you at this stage because I want to hear some of your comments with regards to marrying a student on knowledge. And, and, and I, I'm welcoming your comments at this stage. Normally, I say, look, stop commenting. But um, inshallah, if you want to comment at this stage, uh, that's my sincere uh, advice to you, inshallah, with regards to this. I'm not saying all of the students of knowledge are bad, but I'm saying that have your head screwed on. Don't become... Um, don't become uh, yani amazed and don't let anybody take you uh, for a fool. Don't let anybody take advantage of you. Okay, let me one second. I'm just going to say one more thing. Just because he has a following and a social media page and he's a student of knowledge. Don't, you know, all of us need to have our alarms and our common sense on. When the alarm bells start ringing, don't turn them off and snooze them because he's a student of knowledge. When the alarm bells start ringing, my friend, take a, take notice of those alarm bells. When those alarm bells start ringing, don't say, it's okay, he's a student of knowledge. Don't do that. That's when you're going to get yourself into a situation. And I always say this, it takes two hands to clap. If you're flirting with him and he's a student of knowledge and he flirts back, don't blame him. <laughs> you flirted and he flirted. If you initiated something or he initiated something and you clap back just as much, don't blame him. Okay, because he's weak, you're weak, he's a slave of Allah, you're a slave of Allah, Shaitan whispers to you just like he whispers to him. That's not an excuse. And you know, this whole thing, oh, he used his position of authority. It's not Donald Trump and the you know the president of the United States, he's just somebody uh, who has a following, etc. We shouldn't be aiming to shift the blame. I should be looking at my blame, you look at your blame. These things are really important. Barakallah fikum. So yeah, I want to hear your um, advice. So if you've got any advice, inshallah, um, on that issue, barakallah fikum. If you want to, uh, uh, inshallah, uh, somebody says here, what about men marrying female students? Of There's no problem, inshallah. But it's usually the other way around. And that brother there, he said something beautiful. He said, don't be wowed by eloquent speech. Ah, that's lovely. Don't be wowed by eloquent speech. Absolutely. Do not be wowed uh, 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 by eloquent speech. Okay. That is really important because some guys are eloquent. MashaAllah, they speak and MashaAllah, you know, you become amazed and wowed and da da da. But listen, that tongue is also capable of swearing. That tongue is also capable of sharp words, harsh words, wrong words. Mistakes, lies, slander, backbite, etc. So that's extremely uh, important. Somebody says, any updates on the book?